Hello everyone, this is Pastor Jeremy checking in for our Wednesday night, uh, Wednesday afternoon devotion. This is um, going to be shown on Wednesday, January the 18th. And so I hope that you're having a good week. It's an exciting week around here. Uh, tomorrow night is our meal at uh, Sabor Latino. And so if you've not signed up for that, uh, there is still space for you. And so it's a good chance to eat together. Um, but we've had a lot of good things going on, a lot of meetings and preparation and preparing. But uh, we know that uh, the planning and preparation sets the stage for continued ministry. And so uh, things are going well. Uh, tonight, instead of our traditional devotion, I am, which let's be honest, what's traditional at this point? I tend to, to jump around from week to week, but instead of doing a traditional devotion, I want to share uh, something that was presented at our business meeting last uh, Sunday and was had been affirmed by the deacons and then voted on and affirmed unanimously unanimously by the church. Um, and that respond that was about our new um, logo. Uh, some language that is used in church world these days, you know, our branding, advertisement, the way that we present ourselves. I've heard in the past, you may have called this a, a logo or an emblem. And so whatever language you're familiar with, um, but right now kind of the end word is kind of talking about branding. And so if I say this, it's not, sometimes you think about branding, you think of like, you know, paying millions of dollars to be at the Super Bowl commercial and stuff like that. But uh, we need to be aware of how we present ourselves. And so uh, before I actually was called to serve here, this is a conversation that was already being taken place and some initial steps had been taken. And then uh, with me coming in, they uh, some folks gave me a chance to be a part of this discussion. And so I've been working uh, with a graphic designer and just talking to different folks within the church and, and preparing uh, for a new logo. And so I don't want to give the full spiel that I gave on Sunday. It's not that I would mind. I just don't want to bore uh, too many folks with it. Um, but we just wanted to make sure that we were uh, freshening up the way that we present ourselves. And we wanted to uh, do something that uh, was a little more efficient in how we could use it, uh, or more versatile is probably a better word. Um, our current kind of crest style logo that we've been using um, is, is nice looking, but it kind of limits the way we can make shirts and the way we just do our letterhead and just um, the way we do signage and just lots of things. It just wasn't going to be an option that we wanted. But we also wanted to make sure that we were doing something that became identifiable with our church. Uh, this is pretty common, but we just realized that with our, our previous logo, there were a lot of things that seemed to match up with other places uh, around town, and there was nothing wrong with that, but we just wanted to do something that was identifiable to ourselves. And so uh, this new logo is, uh, I'll share it in just a moment, and I, I've printed it off, and uh, Brian Logan actually does the... Um, the video posting and editing and making sure things cleaned up. He's going to work on putting the actual image on the screen. So I'm kind of going the old fashioned way by just holding up a thing, but that's mostly going to be for my benefit when I have a chance to um, point out things that I wanted you to see. And then uh, he'll have a better version for you to see online. Uh, the other funny thing though, about this kind of stuff is, you know, I'm excited about this, this thing. It's taken a while to get to this point, but um, you know, sports, it's real funny. I follow um, on Twitter, a guy who only really talks about uniforms and, you know, companies will spend millions of dollars working on branding, a logo design, and they release it and it flops. And I certainly hope that's not the case here, but, you know, working with a graphic designer, but not being professional in, in that sense on my end. Um, and, and, you know, really any of our folks that we're working on it, no offense, we, you know, we, we know that this will be something that um, some will love. And so hopefully that is you, but if not, um, it's okay because, you know, the Lord's going to still work and um, it's just part of it. So uh, all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and share a picture of our logo and uh, our new logo that we'll be using and give you a chance to do it. So I've got it on here and it should be probably on the screen uh, as we go through uh, the editing process. And so I want to talk about the meaning because, uh, you know, there's certain things that require meaning over time. You might feel more nostalgia for uh, McDonald's because you've seen that logo forever. And so you look at vintage McDonald's things and it's still the same. Or you might have nostalgia around Christmas time when Coca-Cola and the polar bear comes through and you like all of a sudden feel like it's very Christmassy. And um, even brands for a while have kind of gone back to more uh, retro styling. Burger King is a great example. Um, their logo, they um, went back and did something that almost looks like it was from the 70s and uh, kind of appealing to this uh, retro um, 
vibe that they wanted to put out and just kind of, um, you know, being trendy with what's there. And so, um, when we were working on this logo, we knew that it was something that we would want to um, find uh, meaningful now and be able to tell our story. But it's something that we also believe you'd be able to share the meaning of uh, over time. And so it's kind of a mixture of, of a few things. So what I can do tonight uh, for this is talk about the meaning that went into this and some of the symbolism that we find and what I hope that means for us going forward. And hopefully in some ways this will serve as our devotion too, as you kind of think about what God may be doing in and through our church. And so um, one of the things that was very important in uh, coming up with our logo was we wanted to honor our tradition. Uh, we have prominently used the steeple, uh, and, and that has been a, a fine logo for some time. Uh, but based on our geography of our, our area and our community, especially with the university just being uh, basically, you know, a few doors down, uh, the steeple is probably not as identifiable as it once was. Um, people may not immediately see that and think of us. And so uh, the, the college is actually, the university has actually used that um, their steeples and a lot of their signage and, and marketing and things like that at this point. And so, uh, again, we don't have any ill will towards any of that, but we wanted to do something that maybe was identifiable more just with our story. And so uh, one of the things that we did, and I mean, I'm going to hold this up and I'm sure it may be on your screen differently as well, uh, but we wanted to I use the idea of the octagon. And the octagon, uh, the octagonal structure, is our sanctuary. Uh, one of the Cool things about our architecture with our historic building is it is octagonal in, in nature. And so when we were trying to think of what kind of logo we might be able to use, I just thought that would be a way to pay uh, tribute to uh, all of those who have gone before us, but those who are still here and, and the meaning that we have found in this place. And so uh, there is meaning in octagonal architecture. If you get into people who say, well, this type of structure means this and this type of structure means that, uh, there are some who would say that an, an octagon can symbolize um, regeneration and rebirth and renewal. What a great thing for a church building, right? To be a place of regeneration and rebirth and renewal. Um, but really just going with that octagon shape uh, symbolizing this uh, gathering place. Now, we know that the church is just a building, um, but it also represents the many parts of who we are. And so uh, we wanted to make sure that we were honoring the octagon, um, honoring our tradition of our church. And I thought that by doing this octagonal shape logo, it would be a way to pay tribute to that. And so that was really important that we wanted to honor our tradition. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to do, and I may spend a little more time on this particular section, is um, there's this shape in here. It's kind of an almond shape. Uh, here, go a little higher. Uh, it's called a mandorla. And so a mandorla is uh, featured a lot in church icons. Uh, a lot of times you'll find an image of Christ being in an icon. And what it is uh, found in a lot that you'll see now is... Think of the middle of a Venn diagram. I'll talk about these if you can read my terrible handwriting. But this shape in the middle is where these two things come together. These circles in their own identity join here and we find this overlap. And so in a, uh, church icons, a lot of times Christ was placed in these. And the reason being was that uh, it is considered to be the place where heaven and earth meet. In Christ, we see heaven and earth colliding in, in this person. God made the word made flesh, God dwelling among us, fully God and fully human. And so when we uh, are looking to Jesus and we're looking at our ministry, we are called to continually be seeking out places where heaven and earth meet. And so this means that we're able to acknowledge the world around us uh, by seeing who we are, by seeing maybe who the world is and figuring God, finding God in the places where we overlap, looking for those moments where we can remain true to who we are as uh, created in the image of God and how we're able to do ministry elsewhere. Uh, the almond shape has lots of other meaning in terms of uh, scriptural. You'll find in the Old Testament that um, there was a, a uh, a, a rod that was placed in the, the tabernacle and it produced almonds, uh, almonds being considered a, a thing of vitality and so kind of a sacred nut uh, there. But really, I want to look at this idea of sacred overlap, this mandorla, this meeting of heaven and earth, because uh, there's a book that I've been reading that we're going to share as a church and I haven't figured out how we want to study this together but it's called The Sacred Overlap by J.R. Briggs. And this is where I was first introduced to this concept. And the more that you see it, you just can't help but see it in a million other places. 
Um, but when we talk about this overlap of heaven and earth, Jesus comes to us overlapping so many things. We live in a culture that says you have to choose this or just this, but oftentimes Jesus would take possibly things that seem polar opposites and finds a way to make them uh, work together. And so though you probably cannot read this, Jesus comes where heaven and earth collide, you find Jesus. Jesus is the alpha and the omega. There's Jesus. Jesus is the lion and the lamb. Jesus ate with sinners and he ate with religious folks who also were sinners. That's just church language that we use. He ate with sinners everywhere he went. Jesus came full of grace and full of truth. This is one that sticks out a lot, grace versus truth. Some people say, well, you got to show all grace and don't worry about the truth. And some say, well, we worry about the truth and grace is something that will respond to that. But really, Jesus comes taking these things that we have this tension in between and there is where we find Jesus. One of the things that I really appreciate about this idea of a sacred overlap is that we do not have to change the core of who we are. So as we seek to minister as a church, as we seek to love our community and to love those around us, we don't have to change everything that we are in order to reach those places. We don't expect other folks to change everything about who they are. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to look to find Jesus in the place where our abilities and the needs of the world collide. And there we'll find this moment of sacred overlap. And so we gather in this octagonal structure on Sundays, but we go out into the world in our many different directions, in our many different walks. But everywhere we go, we find a place to live in that holy tension that Jesus calls us to. We embrace where we are, we embrace where our community is, and there we look for holy places of intersection. And this allows us to honor God's design for all places. We're going to talk a lot more about this, but when you see this shape, I would encourage you to pay attention now as you go out. Um, just looking now, our, our eyes are our mandala shapes. You'll see, uh, you know, MasterCard has them, Audi, those are probably not done for religious reasons, but they may have had their own symbolism tied to it. But you're going to find these places of overlap all the time, and we're going to find that Jesus finds us in the midst of these some seemingly tense places to be able to find what is true. We also include in this logo the cross because, you know, the cross is the foundation. Everything in the world is different from what was done for us on the cross, and we wanted to be able to honor it in that way. The colors. The colors were uh, chosen. Um, we didn't want to show favoritism towards any of our favorite um, places. Not that we have favorite places, but, you know, Whitley County Red, Williamsburg Orange. We're not deciding. Um, we weren't trying to uh, compete with really anywhere. We didn't want to, 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 to make it seem like we were only for one place when really we are here to be about Williamsburg and our community, our county, and all, all, all places around. And so we went with a green. Um, green is a symbol of, again, vitality and growth as well. And so it is a, a healthy color. And so with the greens and blues, we're able to kind of um, keep in that particular color scheme and have something that will last going forward. So tonight is one of our first public unveilings. Uh, it was at a business meeting. It's been before the, our deacon body, but this is one of the first times we were putting it out into the social media world. Uh, you will begin to see it in many places. Uh, we hope that over time, this is something that becomes identifiable, but it's not only just something that we recognize, but that we see this intentional ministry mindset, that we seek to be places consumed with the holy over the sacred overlap about finding the places where God is working in the midst of our world to find the places where heaven and earth meet and that we get to be a part of those conversations. We get to be a part of that work and we get to be a part of that mission, honoring our tradition, looking forward to what lies ahead. And I'm really looking forward to it. And so we're going to have some uh, some things that you'll notice that start to ha feature this logo perhaps more prominently. I'm hoping to get some really nice looking t-shirts before too long and so we can rock those out in the world. But uh, I would just ask that you be in prayer. This is a another uh, transition point for our church. This is a, a, a freshening up of our message, but it is a, a new push that we will be putting forward, especially in 2023, about how do we continue to share our message and how do we continue to get it out in a way that is relatable, that is identifiable, but is most importantly seeking to find uh, where God would have us to be and to find what God is doing in the world and how we can be a part of that. So. That's a, uh, a bit of the information regarding this logo. If you're watching this and you didn't take notes, uh, we're going to be doing some write-ups and some other things to so be able to, to uh, familiarize yourself more with the story and this concept of the, the Mandala and, and just everything 
it was tied into that. I hope that you have a great week. I hope to see you. Uh, if I don't see you Wednesday night, I hope to see you Thursday night at the Mexican restaurant. Uh, I hope to see you Sunday for worship. And uh, it's just so good to be together. Uh, it's currently 60 degrees and sunny. I'm recording this on a Tuesday afternoon. Uh, we're getting another false spring, and I am I am all about it. I am so excited, and so I'm glad to just go outside in a little bit and enjoy some time. So have a great week. Uh, we look forward to seeing you soon.